Ladies and gentlemen, before I introduce the principal, in the ring at this time, promoter Lamoris Furness. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the greatest fighters of all time down here in the blue corner, the mongoose himself, Achi Moore! Achi Moore! And now my good friend, introducing the principal first, boxing to my left, out of the blue corner, wearing the star-spangled red, white, and blue, and weighing in at a solid 201 quarter pounds, with a fabulous pro career, 23 wins, only four defeats, 10 of those wins coming by oh, knockout, I think that's the game all the way yeah. from Indianapolis, Indiana, my good friend, Jack B. Williamson! Williamson! And his opponent, to give up boxing himself. out of the blue corner, he too wearing the star strangled red, white, and blue, and he needs no introduction to worldwide boxing fans. He electrified all of the world in 1968 in Mexico City, and he brought us home a gold medal. This man has went on to a brilliant pro career. He's the former world heavyweight champion with a fine pro career, 60 big wins and only two defeats. 58 of those 60 wins coming by knockout from the Bayou City, Houston, Texas, on his way back to one more world title. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you stars. Murder. you have any questions about him? No questions. Go back to your corner and come out boxing. Good luck. Some people wonder to you why the referee gives the instructions in the dressing room. Because when you bring the fighters to the center of the ring, the last thing their their mind is on listening to the referee. Right. A scheduled ten rounder. We must add that George Foreman is not gone. Gone ten rounds. Perhaps he went in seven. He went with Mark Young out of Miami. Round number one of a scheduled 10 rounder, and we're seeing J.B. Williamson doing pretty much what he's going to have to do, and that stick and move and uh, stay out of harm's way because when Big George starts landing those shots, most people go down. You know, people, I, I earlier brought up uh, brought up the question of brought up the question of George Foreman's stamina. Well, in the gym, he's bars 15 straight rounds with no rest, 45 minutes. Just every four or five minutes, he throws another sparring partner. J.B. Williamson uh, in the red, white, and blue trunks trying to get things going here. Round number one, our main event, George Foreman, fight number 17 on the comeback trail. 16 previous wins, all by knockout. Again, we might add some suspect competition, but he does stay busy. George is adept at picking off blows, parrying blows with both hands. His jab is something which is often as powerful as many gentlemen's big right hand. A jab is devastating. Good body shot by Williamson. Actually, it was after a couple of jabs against Guido Trani of Italy that he pretty much just gave up. George looks serious in here today. I mean, a lot of the fights he takes on with a comical tone, a smile on his face, and then he looks a little serious. George got down to about 240, but now right weighing into 255. He feels his weight is not a factor. He's not a speed guy, never was. Big right hand landed by JB. Now he ties up George. JB's got to stay off those ropes. Good right hand by JB. This is like cutting down a redwood, though. I mean, you have to feel that for J.B. Williamson. Well, if George Foreman ever gets knocked down, you know what they're going to hear in the background? Timber! George going through the body with that left. Power in both hands. Good jab to the body by J.B. Williamson. Jim Wisham showing his uh, boxing skills here in round number one, staying outside, using all of his 22-foot ring. Kick JB slightly. George is so strong. One punch and it's, he lands it. And it's to really appreciate the guy. You have to be a ringside though to see the power of this this man. 
his jab can distort a, uh, for another fighter's face. Just his features become all good right uppercut there. JB showing some signs of being able to handle Big George here, at least in round number one, but others have. Now George getting on the horse and trying to <laughs> chase down JB. Round number one of the Schedule 10 rounder, George Foreman, the large man with no hair, against J.B. Williamson in the red, white, blue trunk. Round number one is in the book. George heads back to his corner, as does J.B. Williamson. Archie Moore, the legendary Archie Moore, who fought for the world title at age 42, is working the corner as he has since the comeback began back in March of 1987. Yeah. Archie Moore, one of the greatest heavy, light heavyweights of all time. His fight with Yvonne Durrell will always go down as probably the greatest light heavyweight fight in history. Interesting note here that George Foreman is in such good shape, he does not sit be, He does not sit between rounds. Well, they bring him in a bar stool. I mean, most... Okay. As we get a look at J.B. Williamson, Cheney working that as you see and a good round for JB one of which he probably won on the judges scorecard he won it on my card George isn't worried, worried about judges scorecards he's been scoring knockouts 16 straight and one day in Toronto in 1975 he fought five different people in three round exhibitions winning all five he said he was bored he needed a bigger challenge well, if there was a mistake in J.B. Williamson last round, and you was that he landed the right hand, but he seemed to be scared to let the left hook go after it. I thought George was open for that punch, and the few times that he didn't throw it, could have caught George cleanly. Certainly an upgrading competition, as you see a, a very well-schooled J.B. Williamson in good shape at 200 pounds. George trying to cut off the ring, and you have to wonder that, are these punches even hurting George for him? He continues to plot for it, the, the jab now. Jam out there three times, two landing very well. JB slightly off balance throwing blows there. You've got to throw punches. JB off, was off balance. Off there. balance is JB kind of doubles up, but it was because he was off balance. Now he tries to work inside George with a very, very determined look at his face. Two minutes to go around. George just missing wildly with the right. If it lands, three people go down. <laughs> as slow as George is, though, JB should be feigning him. Feigning him and get him to react to a feint and then bang, move in with combination. George starting to land more consistently here. The jab and now the right. George just, just bend it down. Look at those, you can hear those shots here at ringside. George going wildly, but the jab is out there. Now he's going to... Windmill right up here, right above us. J.B. Williams is trading with George Foreman. Not a wise thing to do. And J.B. got the better exchange there. The right hand is the exit of the corner. Round number two of the scheduled 10 rounds in the right. duty center in Galveston, the Texas. Jubilee ringside with Pedro Fernandez. And George Foreman looking a little better here in round at number two than he did in round number one, catching J.B. Williamson with a number of shots, including that overhand right. He continues just to walk forward. Looks like J.B.'s hurt a little bit there. J.B. is leaning heavily on George Foreman. Yeah. But fighting back again. I'll say one thing about George, though. He's starting to suck wind. A hey, low blow. Low, real low. Oh. A low blow from George Foreman. <laughs> Big right, right hand. hand and the action continues to be... They're right above Furious. us there. George trying to land those big shots, just missing JB's face with that big right. JB sticking to his game plan, still work, trying to work the body. JB Williamson still standing at the end of round number two. We have 17 seconds to go. We'll be taking a break. But a, a very slow JB Williamson. The last punch he landed was almost a slow motion. We'll come back with action from Dallas and Texas. George Foreman, J.B. Williamson on score. Good body shot. <laughs> Williamson, the Moody Center in Galveston, Texas. And George Foreman had a lot better second round than he did first. J.B. Williamson looked like he was sucking some air between rounds two and three. But he's back on his toes and trying to stay outside. Well, J.B. Williamson fought March 17th in Bedford, Kentucky and scored a first-round knockout. Before that, his last fight was in April of 1986 when he lost the championship to Dennis Andrews. So he's been inactive. 
A lot of rust on JB tonight. And of course he had, according to the California Boxing Commission, he had a rental problem. A big right hand landed over the glove of JB Williamson, and JB's taking a lot more shots here in rounds two and three than he did in the initial round. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing with George is he doesn't have to land clean on you to kill you and knock you out. I mean, he just has to club you with shots, and they hurt. He, just forearms will uh, yeah. do you in. And you don't want to get hit with the forearm and elbow, definitely. George taking that jab out there, and going down low inside of the kidneys. A lot of low blows there. JB right. Williamson is rocked a little bit, but staying right there like the man he is. JB needs to get off these ropes to get out of that corner. He needs to get out of town, maybe. <laughs> George, as he begins ropes, not a wise move by JB because George is not too worried about punching himself out. No, see, JB forgot his strategy. The strategy was to move George around on those 40-year-old legs and make him tire. Decent combination by JB yeah. Williamson. And you mentioned the fact earlier, Pedro, a 22-foot ring, and that's certainly to the advantage of JB Williamson. There he is moving now. He's got to stick and He's move. He's got to move. He has no choice. Against the ropes again, and not a good thing. He's just got to get off the ropes. He spins, but George continues to come forward. Big George Foreman in the white trunks. Round number three, and the former light heavyweight champion, J.B. Williamson, in the red, white, and blue. And Having a good round of it here in round number three after George looked like he was taking control in round number two. The jab out there. Get out of that corner. You know, George isn't a work of art to our fans out there, obviously. He's not a big physical specimen. He doesn't cut well with muscles. But George Foreman is the hardest head hitting heavyweight probably in the history of boxing. You 58 out of his 60 fights all by knockout, the highest percentage in the sport with more than 40 fights. Break, tap back, turn and move. Only losing twice, once to Muhammad Ali and once to Jimmy Young, which pretty much he hung up, hung it up in 1977 after losing to Jimmy Young. Came back 10 years later. He lost a 12-round decision to Jimmy Young in San Juan, Puerto Rico, and he said that after that fight he saw God. Yeah, Gil Clancy recounts that story. Round number three about in the books. J.B. Williamson a lot more impressive and landing a couple shots here. Yeah. But maybe slowly wearing down. As we're going to check in on the corner of... J.B. Williamson as he heads back to talk with Champ Chaney and go over his strategy. You know, J.B. did have to sit out for a couple years because of that retinal problem. Alleged retinal problem. But he says there was no problem. He talked about that earlier today. I went to New York to fight a fight in which uh, a doctor there said I had torn retinas in both eyes. And uh, a fight was canceled. Uh, I, I returned home, and I had two or three examinations after that, and all the examinations I had proved that uh, I had no torn redness whatsoever. J.B. Williamson saying the diagnosis by the New York doctor was incorrect. He had no retinal tears and uh, actually lost, I guess you'd say, three years of his boxing career because of the... Uh, misinformation and he's launched he's launched some uh, litigation over that and supposedly he's in the uh, they're going to go into deposition pretty soon round number four once again george foreman not sitting between rounds as has been his custom since he came back in march of 1987 jb williamson still looking rather fresh staying outside that's when he's done his best work getting in getting the job done and getting out before george can go start clubbing away a little redness in the nose area of george foreman something i haven't seen oh good left hook left hook landed by jb williamson and maybe the confidence factor coming into play here feeling that he can hit george and at least sting him if not hurt him badly yeah george looks like he wants to end this fight right now coming straight at jb no respect and when you see George get hit like that, you ask yourself the question if he would fight Mike Tyson, one of the better punchers in the light heavyweight, in the heavyweight division of all time, what kind of damage would Mike Tyson inflict? Well, you know, Mike Tyson has that peekaboo style. All the Gusty Amato fighters basically have it. Floyd Patterson had it. And Mike Tyson has it. And personally, I think that style is uh, employed because of the fact a, that their chins aren't that good. A big combination. Yeah. Great body shot landed by Big George, but J.B. still standing there, but he's got to get out of the corner because he only gets hurt over there. Yep. George landing right to now the right, That's another it. right, and J.B. gets turned around. Yeah. J.B. just a little wobbly there. 
JB looking much like he did in round number two, and George coming on right now. George Foreman looking for his 61st victory of his professional career, which spans three decades. Just missing with a wild right. And you feel the draft on that. He felt the win, and he's landing now with just a short chopping shot. And JB absorbing all of them. JB is ready to fall. JB might have had enough. The proud Marine looks like he's ready to go. At age 32, he wants you know, he could no be, more. He could be just, he could be letting George shoot, shoot his wide here. A low blow landed by J.B. Williamson. Oh, That's the first by him. George landed many. One minute to go here in round number four. A big round for George Foreman. But J.B. now getting that second win and landed some nice shots himself. And there seems to be a cut over the right eye of J.B. Williamson. Yeah. He's absorbed some big, big shots. But he's coming off the ropes and landing some shots himself. If... if uh... If J.B. makes it back to the corner, Champ Chaney's got his hands full with that cut. George will not let him get out of there. Body shots, head shots, J.B. coming back. Dirty, pounding away, 30 seconds to go on round number four, action packed. George really warming up here, landing another wobbled. right. J.B. is ready to go. He's very wobbled. But he's game, as I said earlier, there's no dog in J.B. Williams. No doubt about it, he showed tremendous heart here. He's taking some big, big shots like those two right there. George zeroing in. We'll come back. Action of round number five after this. To slow down tremendously, but he comes out with a blow between rounds number four and number five, and he looks like he's got the spring back in his step, and George continues to plod forward. Yep. JB's looking good on his, on moving on that little bicycle of his. He's got to move around the ring. He does. I think that was more of a slip, not a problem. JB's tired. JB's a tired fighter. Well, you know, is you get tired pressing against bigger guys. When I sparred with bigger guys in the in the gym. They used to wear me out right away. Even if I was a better fighter than them. I mean, even he's staying outside and landing some nice shots. But you know, George almost looks impervious to pain. Uh, that sounds ridiculous, but he's taking some big shots. He's just pounding away. Well, I think without I think Foreman could beat people like Damiani and, and Deploy people like that. I really think that he's a legitimate challenger for uh, heavyweight champion Mike Tyson. Speaking of Damiani and Deploy, they'll be fighting on score next Saturday afternoon. Johnny Deploy and Francesco Damiani for Pacero Italy for the World Boxing Organization Heavyweight Championship. Next Saturday, May 6th on score. Deploy, Damiani. The WBO title. Yes, sir. Oh, big, big left, left hook. hook. JB's in JB trouble. JB is hurting. No, uh, maybe he's posturing here. He looked real. That's, that's really a, hurt. That's a weird posture if he's posturing. Oh, maybe you're right, Pedro. Uh, no, that's he not. He's hurt. Shot. He's ready. That referee stopped the fight. Away. Yeah. George Foreman gets at 140 of round number five. The crowd not too happy with that. Pounding away as they embrace that center ring. A... Another impressive performance by that gentleman right there, all 255 pounds of him. It doesn't go down as an artistic success, but he continues to pound and pound away at his opponents, getting win number 61 of his career, 17 straight on the comeback trail. Your comment. Hugh, he's not an artist. He's, he's a brute. He's a slugger. Yeah, and he's... A fifth round knockout for George Foreman. Referee, of course, was Chris Jordan, who said, I have seen it up. But here is the action, 140 into round number five. The uppercut got things going. As the left comes over, nails him on the top of the head, and then it was target practice for Big George. And that's certainly one of the more dangerous participation sports down here in Texas. George had actually walked past JV there on the ropes. But he goes right back to work, coming in. George is looking for the referee to stop the fight. Before George doesn't that. want to hurt people. He just no. wants to. Not, he just wants to win. Yeah. There's the left, and then the right, and then the, another left, and the overhand right, and then the left. We can go on and on on that. Chris Jordan, referee, had seen enough of the brutality. George Foreman pretty much stepped back, took a look at his work. We'll come back and announce the official time of the knockout from the Galveston from Galveston Booty Center. After this, stay with us. Ouch! How long?